You know, autism is a complex disorder. It's a neurodevelopmental disorder. And as has been quoted often and often, Stephen Shaw famously said, when you meet one person with autism, you meet one person with autism. Each person is very different and has very different strengths and weaknesses. For a lot of families with autism, uh, the way the diagnosis is shared uh, can be a very traumatizing experience. And very often, along with the diagnosis, uh, you know, parents and families are told like this is almost like the end of your regular life. And you know, now your life is going to be controlled by this thing called autism. And you're going to have a severely dependent child on your hand. And then cures are touted to them, various kinds of cures. I have come across at least 30 cures. And some of them involve a lot of medical procedures. Stem cell falls in that category, which involves a lot of procedures. Even so, parents feel if this is something that is going to cure my child and bring my family back on track and we can work towards that life that we always dreamed of for this child and for ourselves, then it is worth it. And so a lot of families go into this uh, treatment expecting that. If you had a child who had a certain issue, you don't know what the cause is, you don't know where it's coming from, how it's happened. As a parent, you can understand the desire to want to find something. So they don't just do stem cells. They've tried everything from alternative medicine. Some will have tried the Baba who catches you somewhere on the road and says something. Trust me, you have no idea. And if you go on the net, there are over 250 to 300 so-called cures for autism. So a parent is just looking for some fast remedy to help their child. Unfortunately, there's no fast train in this, in this situation. My name is Ram. My son Ajay is an autistic child since birth. As a child, he was like all other children, but he was very much hyperactive. If you are not holding properly, he will fall down. Like that, that much he was, at least 10 to 15 doctors are consulted, different, different neurologists, specialists like that. Everyone used to write some tablets or some tonic, something like that. Try, 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 that nothing happened, then Ayurvedic treatment, there also nothing was done. Then naturopathy treatment I have done. No difference. For decades now, autism has been looked at as something akin to a curse. If a family has a person with autism, they would go to any extent, even resort to medical treatments like stem cell therapy in order to address and maybe cure because that's what's promised. I come to know about the stem cell therapy on online. Then in 2011, I have done the stem cell therapy. Myself have taken the decision because I thought that as a parent, if improvement is there, well and good. Thinking that I approach doctor. So stem cells are found at every stage of life, right from after conception, going on right into adulthood and they are present in every organ of the body. Firstly, just to clarify, the stem cell therapy, it's not therapy for most conditions as yet. For most conditions, it's an experimental procedure. So for autism, various cells are being used, but in India, what is being done commonly is to use bone marrow stem cells. It was just procedure, just to remove some blood from the spinal cord. Then after one or two days, they will develop into the laboratory. They will inject it back. One day I was in the hospital lying. Then second day they removed the blood. The third day they developed. And fourth day they insected back. Fifth day they discharged. For a condition like autism and various other brain disorders, what practitioners are doing is they're injecting these cells to the covering 
of the spinal cord. So though it's deep in the bone, of course the individual is anesthetized and you know, the bone marrow is aspirated. It is taken out and some of the cells are removed by spinning them in a centrifuge. The remaining mixture of cells are then washed and these are then injected back into the individual. One of the big myths is persons with autism are also intellectually disabled and that needs to be addressed. There's the other myth which says all are Einsteins. So it's neither of them is true. And what we hear is that not only is the treatment very painful and intrusive, but it has it comes along with very expensive therapies, which many of these clinics that give stem cell into inverted commas treatment insist on. We in Forum for Autism are so distressed uh, over the way parents come to us, you know, every few months, every few years, talking about stem cell therapy and how it has depleted their savings, how families have mortgaged their homes. You know, you even have mothers come and tell us that they've had to sell their Mangal Sutra to pay for this treatment. And then what happens is, despite all of this, obviously because there's no cure for autism, uh, the autism does not go away. And then they're told that they have to go in for more stem cell procedures and they might have to go in for two or three more. And that is when the parents come to us literally in tears because they have nothing left for the rest of the family, for their other children. And that's the story that comes to us repeatedly. They told her after stem cell therapy, you'll be becoming almost normal like that. Then after one week, they call for a checkup. They told some exercise because they keep some four or five balls here and there in some room. Tell him to find out the balls like that. And do yoga, do this, do that, like that, nothing. But after that also, there was no difference at all. Only I lost 2.6 lakh. 2,60,000 lakh, I that chart. I lost that amount. So how did you arrange for that money? Some amount I was having because that time my business was running well. I arranged almost 2 lakh rupees. Balance 60,000 I got it from my friend circle. Did you ask them to reduce the fee? Yes, ask for some reduction. But he was selling that usually we charge 3.5 lakh. It is almost reasonable, so I can't reduce anything. I'm not privy to what they actually uh, charge, but I know that it ranges anywhere from 2-3 lakhs up to 15 lakhs and uh, it depends entirely on where you come from, what your social standing is. Stem cell therapy has to be under the rubric of research with the Indian Council of Medical Research, ICMR. At the same time, one must understand that research should always be without any commercial interests. The way I think is being done right now in India is not uh, uh, allowed. And unfortunately, what you're getting at the given moment is a marketing gimmick. It's, I mean, it's almost fraudulent, I would say. Because um, to sell something which is not proved to be beneficial worldwide, anywhere, uh, and to sell it to a gullible population who is looking for that magic bullet for their child, and to sell it at a cost where you actually pawn off your land and your jewels and everything just to give your child this little chance of being what they want as a normal child, I think it's just not right. Even doctor was selling that government has approved. It is official. Yeah, he, to he told me, no, I have done a lot of patients, uh, this uh, stem cell of a lot of people got uh, improved. Like that, he was showing some book also, a lot of children's photographs like that. But there are also no identity, nothing, only photograph. But after doing this simple therapy, I come to know that it is not approved, it is not official, it is unofficially they are doing it. After this, I come to know. Of course, that is my bad luck. The Indian Council for Medical Research, or ICMR for short, which is the apex research body in India that draws up guidelines for research, has commented on this fact that uh, you know they've gone through the studies that are published and 
they, they find that no definite conclusions of efficacy can be drawn from these. For example, to introduce a new drug in the market, it takes up to 10 years. The amount of literature in, in uh, ASD and stem cell therapy is just not enough. The, the word cure is big and bold, but they advertise very blatantly, whether it's uh, on their billboards, I mean on their uh, hoardings, or even on the internet, as though this is the cure and the be-all and end-all of a cure for autism and other developmental disabilities. Whatever he has promised me before the operation, nothing has taken place. Absolutely nothing. It's a business. For doctors, it's a business, nothing else. Yeah, this is a very sad state of affairs because, uh, you know, practitioners who do this therapy uh, advertise it as being very safe. But uh, one published study uh, of, uh, you know, stem, uh, individuals who are treated in this manner with stem cells uh, did say that 9% of the individuals uh, had epilepsy after the procedure and some others also had nausea, vomiting and headache. And these are the short-term immediate effects. We don't even know what the long-term effects are because there is no data available. One practitioner in India is also using embryonic stem cells uh, for autism, as therapy for autism. And uh, in fact, worldwide it is known that uh, embryonic stem cells can give rise to tumors. So I think we are all left with a medical model or a medical deficit model of disabilities. When we think of a child who's, um, who has a disability, we typically think something is missing, there's a defect, there's a deficit. The people around the individual, whether it's their immediate support circle, the family, all of those people need to recognize and accept this person for who he or she is. And not focusing on the disability, which is what the medical model will do, will seek cure. And that's where primarily all these doctors who are promoting stem cell therapy, they're all from the medical field. So they're trying to fix. The social model will say, you know, this is what we need to do in terms of the system around the individual. Accepting the individual with their strengths and weaknesses and then fixing that environment around to make it such that this individual is able to lead that quality of life that he or she has every right to do. So I think fundamentally offering a cure for autism itself is bothersome um, because it's not a disease to be cured. It's a difference, it's part of the natural neurodiversity of the world that we live in uh, and I think the sooner we adopt that approach to uh, conditions like autism, the better it is for all of us actually to understand each other. But usually anxious parents, they approach, they just believe, blindly believe the doctor. They take that knowledge, nothing else. Actually, 50% part is government's mistake. They should not allow, they should stop totally. They should ban the doctors. If doctors are sincere to their profession, they should straight away stop this nonsense. They should never ever do this stem cell therapy and loot the people. I lost the money. Please don't spend on doctors, on Samsal Dharavi. So the sad part is that by the time the parents come to realize that all these publicized therapies are really not what they claim to be, they've lost a very crucial part of a child's development. That's the first few years of life. So keeping intact and continuing with established therapies is very important in those first few years of life which involves behavior techniques, strategies, and occupational th strategies, therapy strategies, and sensory integration, speech therapy. And that we suggest to them and we tell them how important it is to do it at home, to change your lifestyle, to change your uh, parents' and the grandparents' responsiveness to it. For parents, I would say, and we say this all the time uh, in our support group, uh, Forum for Autism, is that you have to just be as you would be with any other person. So your child who has been diagnosed with the autism condition has as much a right to be traveling by public transport, to be in all kinds of public spaces, then whether they be theaters or, you know, art galleries or schools or, you know, tourist destinations or weddings or birthday parties or wherever. 
at the end of the day, a child with autism, a child with any intellectual or other developmental disabilities becomes an adult with the disability. Now that adult has to be beyond parents, after the caregivers, or no more, has to be able to live his or her life in a way that's happy, that makes sense to them and that, that you know, creates for them a joy. So that is what the focus is, is how do we support this individual where he or she is, what with the strengths that he or she has, and how do we support for those weaknesses that they will need support in. Um, so first and foremost, I try to explain autism as a difference rather than a defect or a disease. Uh, we talk about neurodiversity and uh, the fact that everybody has ways of understanding that are different. We talk about what's common in autism, which is that social communication as well as areas of interest uh, may be something that's different from some of their other peers. Uh, but I also try to emphasize that it's a double empathy problem. That just as you don't understand why your child is doing what he or she or they are doing, um, uh, they are finding it hard to understand what you're doing. So it's not just a one-way thing that your child needs to adapt to be the way that you expect them to or want them to. Uh, but it's also about you learning how to approach your child and engage your child in ways that they would understand better. So an inclusive environment means that everybody is is accepted the way they are and in an environment they are asked for what support they would need and given that support and have a safe space for all the individuals. And what people can do to understand uh, more about neurodivergence is to have more neurodivergent people in, in their spaces and by sh interacting with them, asking them, uh, they can know more about the neurodiversity. Uh, I think in our society, uh, the the word different is is seen as as wrong or not okay. And usko agar hum change karke differences ko accept kare, har kisi ki differences ko accept kare, to usse hum kafi neuro affirming society ban sakte hain by accepting it everybody. Um, at YCT, after we set up YCT, you know, we set it up with a big question mark, honestly. I knew what we wanted to do, which was create opportunities for adults to live and work in the community. In the course of the last so many years, we have met some brilliant individuals, very uh, powerful uh, persons in their own right. They're not relegated to the sidelines anymore, which they would have been and had been, many of them, during their school and uh, schooling and you know early uh, early years and when we have given them the choices the respect that they deserve they have shown us that they can they're happy they um, they feel sort of as they belong they feel as though they're part of something larger and they are happy people in that larger whole it begins with your own home, your own community. Instead of making a judgment about somebody who looks different or acts different, trying to understand that person, uh, being genuinely open and curious uh, about what it is about them uh, that makes them different, what might they have to contribute to our learning and our experience of life is really important. Uh, I think also there are people in power especially for children and families. So that's the medical profession, that's the policy makers, that's teachers. And they have enormous powers over how children experience their day-to-day -day life. And it's very important that those people become aware of a neurodiverse way of thinking, that people can be different, it's okay, and we can individualize our responses to people. Everybody doesn't have to respond the same way.